up. So we're going to have a live demonstration uh, by Dr. Hamid Abazi. How are we doing in there? Very good. Now, how is, how is the radiation? Is it is it is it firing up? It seems everything seems to be working perfectly. Perfect. It looks like you're in a nuclear plant there with all these things right next to you. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear you. <laughs> Perfect. Nice. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. So I'm, I'm not sure if you are able to see my uh, setup here, but if you take my name away, you would be able to see that what you see here is all I need to do the interbody part. And I'm going to do the interbody part exactly the way I would do it in the OR, meaning as you see, and if you put the x-rays on AP and lateral, I have two C-arms that give me direct AP and lateral picture. And every time I shoot x-rays, I'm going to have a registration. And the joke among my group is that we do use a most advanced uh, neural navigation machine, which is between my ears, and the most advanced robot, which is attached to my shoulder. We just have to work on the software to hone those skills. Now, if you can center it, like, you know, if you can uh, show, I see that you guys don't see the entire um, lateral and AP. It's a little cut off. I'm not sure if you can, you know, change it a little. Otherwise, I can change it with my machine a little that you see maybe a little more. If you go with the uh, lateral machine, just a touch up a little more. Thank you. X-ray? Yeah, that's perfect. That is look much better. And to see that a little better, actually, I think we can just, if you open the back two of the AP, and that is what, how, what I do. I control the X-ray machine myself. And we have a protocol to teach all the people who help us in the war the motion X-ray. Like one of the first thing I do, I tell them, you know, this is up, this is down, this is north toward the head, south. And then we, we, we talk about those nomenclature that there's a good communication. And the first thing I start is putting a, a, a spinal needle on the level of interest. Here, I'm going to go above that level. So you see that it's, uh, uh, um, okay. spinal needle is exactly where I would take my bone marrow. So I'm going to start actually do exactly as I would do. I make an incision that about one and a half centimeter, I put X-ray, and I, the way we hold our hand is exactly to avoid getting too much radiation. Like this is very soft bone here, X-ray. 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 So at this point, you know, um, I stimulate the Jamshidi up to 30 milliamp. I apologize. Usually my uh, C-arms are on very, yeah, right now this uh, monitor is, so I have to turn my head a little to the side, but I stimulate the Jamshidi up to 30 milliamp. If I don't get any response at 30 milliamp, the first thing I do, I take five cc of uh, bone marrow from this level and start saturating my uh, tricalcium phosphate with it. And then the next step is I put a K wire X-ray. And now, obviously, now I'm done with that. I got my biologic, I mixed it with my, um, I, I got my bone marrow, mixed it with my biologic. Then I start actually um, then marking, um, do we have a marking pen here by any chance that I can use? I start marking the anatomical landmarks. If you get the AP, please. So this is the um, one of our landmarks. Obviously we have the midline already. And as you see, I use the elasticity of the K wire to hold my hands out of the way of the X-rays. And thank you very much. Thank you. So again, AP. Again. So so we have a cross, and um, now I get the anatomical midline. A AP, and that anatomical midline is after we adjusted X-ray for patient's anatomy, obviously. Now, sometimes if patient has rotation, 
or scoliosis, these C arms have to do acrobatic to get a true AP and lateral for that one segment I'm going to work on. Then for the lateral, I am going to again use the elasticity of this to get the lateral, please. Again. Again. The midpoint of the disc, lateral. And I mark that to the, where the tangentially, the vertical goes to um, horizontal, and I transfer that distance to the midline, and I end up with two lines. More or less, this is to be equidistant in the AP and lateral to the Cambin triangle, so we can go at 45 degree. Then here I'm going to be a little generous with my skin incision. Every person has different anatomy. It's not a certain distance or certain centimeter. It is just whatever the measurement gives you. And then I perform a, about one and a half centimeter incision. And the next step is the neuromonitoring probe. We have uh, the, the electrodes in the leg and then we stimulate at three milliamp and I'm talking to my neuromonitoring patient, I'm sorry, a person, and obviously patient is not paralyzed. We make sure that you have four twitches before we start that. And then we go at 45 degree, but we then adjust it. This is a very skinny patient. Most of my patients are like um, three times this size. So X-ray, but AP and lateral. So I'm hitting now the pedicle of the level below X-ray. And then I literally, while I'm stimulating, run it down the, the, the um, pedicle X-ray. And at this point, I'm just positioning myself more and more toward the Cambin triangle while I'm stimulating X-ray. So this is a typical entry point for Cambin triangle. It is more medial than most of people realize. And uh, as well, the angle you know, can, can be 45 degree more or less, but as well, at this point, or even before, I have to choose, do I want to go all the way to the other side to put a disc, uh, the spacer, the cage on the epiphyseal ring exactly on the, the other side? Do I want to put it in the front of the uh, uh, disc space? I can choose truly by um, starting point and the angle where I want to end up. So, but either way, at this point, I stimulate a four milliamp X-ray. And then the sleeves go down, goes down, X-ray. The probe comes out. The K-wire goes in, X-ray. Before I poke in, I make sure I get another um, X-ray, so I'm still having change. You see, I'm using a coker. I use extensive use of coker, X-ray, X-ray. So the rest is dilating. I use the, this dilator, which is eight millimeter, and I use it like roll it in, X-ray. It's very minimalistic approach. It's really no complex tools uh, that are involved here, X-ray. So I'm hoping now this cadaver doesn't move you know, obviously, you know, we have to adjust it. One of the saying is dilator passes the midline, K-wire does not. So I have to push it back. And you see the technique I'm using. I'm using my fingers fulcrum to pull it back so I'm not passing the midline. One centimeter to two centimeters is good enough. X-ray. Maybe even a little less. X-ray. Now at this point, I bend the K-wire over in one of the groove and just hammer the thing in. And X-ray, obviously this uh, disc is a normal disc, and uh, we, we all know that normal disc is the hardest disc to remove. X-ray, now once the K-wire is out, I pass the midline. X-ray, and you notice that already we achieved some physiologic or indirect decompression. Now the handle comes off, the tube, Eight millimeter inside, 10 millimeter outside, goes in, and I, with a rotating motion, I hammer it in, X-ray. I'm at the epiphyseal ring, and then with one motion, I get it in, X-ray. So that is quite good place. Again, because this is a normal disc, the pressure of the 
disc itself is going to push it out. So in some patients are like that. And as you see, I put my hand on the patient and I'm just using the ergonomic for, to my advantage. The next step is actually going with the drill to create a space and has marking. If, it is in the, if the tube is in the right place, the three, 33 millimeters is the maximum the drill can go in. But I get a lots of x-rays at this point. X-ray. And as you see, I'm controlling the tube with my hand, x-ray. Here we are. So I can pivot it back and forth. Can you get a lateral floor for a second? Lateral floor, you see, I'm going back and forth and I use and I go this direction and that direction to maximize the use. Then now the space is created. I can go and take the pieces out and normal this is going to be hard. I'm just going to demonstrate now the fan in correct where I practically push it in and it opens up and uh, literally um, help me with my discectomy. It goes in a very specific, these tools are very specific. They are made only for this purpose and it takes time to get used to the mix ray. And again, it's very rare that I do a, if only for a disc that looked this normal, if ever. So little by little, it has a marking that tells me how big the cage is going to be. From the drill itself, I know that the cage has to be a 33 millimeter. Now with this, I'm opening and turning up and down. Can you get a lateral floor? And I can go to the side. I feel now the end plate. And now I feel again, please. I feel the end plate on the other side. I go in and out, and then once I'm done with this tool, and many times I go with these tools back and forth. It's not an order. I just see what helps me with the procedure. Now, and again, you see in this patient with the disc not really holding the tube, I'm, I'm holding the tube safe with my hand. Now, there are two ways I use this. I go to four quadrants for upper end x-ray, x-ray again, and then I go in and take the material out and I clean it. I'm not going to do the too much time here because I guess you get the idea. And then I go backhand to the lower end plate. I see all, already a lot of pieces that are there. And if I spend some time here, I'm sure I can get a lot of material out. Okay, but uh, then the other tool we talked about is so-called loop curette that when I put it in, I put it in the direction of the disc. Then I open up the loop. If we get the x-ray, we will see how it's behaving inside x-ray. And now I can actually open it up more x-ray. Now here, this loop curret goes around and I spend a little time here usually, but then practically when I take it out, it take a lot of material away, which uh, I go a few times back and forth, and then I use the pituitary to get the pieces out. Obviously, in the surgery, I have some help that I have material that the instrument get handed to me. So I'm a little more efficient in the surgery than here. But with the spending a little time, you see good piece of material can come out. And this is one of my favorite tools. It's a so-called articulating curette that goes in both directions, x-ray. And if you can get a, the fluorolateral again, here, I'm on the bone. I feel I'm on the bone. And as a matter of fact, I can go to the lower end plate again, fluoro, please. Obviously, in a real person, I don't get a floor. This is just for demonstration. But I feel the high frequency vibration. I am on the bone right now. So then I finish it up with more um, action of the pituitary. So I'm not going to go through that. You get the idea. At this point, my tricalcium phosphate is soaked with bone marrow for three to five minutes. Then this is in a directional tube, x-ray. I can put it down, 
or to the other side, to the, either of the end plates, X-ray, whatever direction I want to put it, and I push my biologic in. Now, at this point, um, a K wire goes back in. Um, I have to get a K wire from my table. I push the dull end of the K wire in, X-ray. Because I have tricalcium phosphate, it gets literally locked in the tricalcium phosphate, and it stays quiet well in. And then the tube comes out, X-ray. Then the next step is to put in the cage in. It's a conical, we call it arrow cage. It's conical, like an arrow. Um, the surface is concave. The cage itself, the tip of it is a concave, and the, uh, the surface that attaches to the disc is convex, and it's packed, it has side windows, it's cannulated, it goes over the K-wire, it's all packed by my assistant, X-ray, and then I gently move it in, X-ray. First, I love tap it, we call it love tap, that there is a dent that is created to the capsule, X-ray. Then I pull it back again. KVAR doesn't pass the midline X-ray. And the double bend in most of my patients are so big, if I don't put a double bend, it pokes into the skin. And then I'm ready. You see, I'm positioning my legs because now you have to get it in. Now, I'm, I'm going to show it to you and tell you something about it as well, X-ray, but I get the X-ray, it's already dented, and then X-ray. And then this comes out, and then I can put a final positioning. There are different size cages and so on and so forth. And then obviously here I didn't choose it. Um, it wasn't very choosy with my size. And the rest of it is getting this uh, inserter out, X-ray. So in a, I have a surgeries from the beginning to the end. If you put just entire all if you see the surgery from the beginning to the end, from the skin cut to the time cage is in and one K wire is in, it's usually in average take me about seven to 10 minutes. So that part is done. And then I just have to replicate it for other levels and then put the percutaneous screws in. I wanted to as well to show you the action of the decorticator, what we call facet decorticator. And that is very easy. Just take less than a minute and first, I dilate the tissue. I, no, let's put it this way. First, I put all my K wires, then the AP machine goes out. I don't really use the AP machine because my trajectory is fixed. I only need, you don't have to take it out now, but I don't need the AP machine anymore after my K wires are in. It's out, I have a full access here. So I dilate, then the decorticator, as you see, is conical. The, there's a groove for the K wire that it goes X-ray. And here you see in the medial superior aspect, it drops in now X-ray. And now I'm grinding the surface. I feel again the high frequency vibration of um, that rasp, rasping the surface of the facet X-ray. And then the inner piece comes out, biologic goes in, and then the tap push all the biologic toward the uh, decorticated facet. This comes out, X-ray, and this is ready for the screw. I don't tap for the screw. I don't do anything else. I just put my screws, and I put the, use the screws that are very dull um, tip and dull threads, sort of center itself. It's less likely that it cuts through the cortical bone or um, and that is what I learned as well from my orthopedic colleagues. I used to be very restrictive putting bicortical screw. Um, I learned it from orthopedic that is actually a good thing to put bicortical screw, especially in this patient with soft bone. I definitely would put bicortical screw, meaning about half a centimeter, the tip of the screw will uh, engage into the end plate of the other side, or uh, not end plate, the cortical bone of the other side. And what I have as well noticed that I really like the feeling. I feel when I'm going through that, so I rarely or I never use a um, power drill. I use my feeling to know what, when I'm going through structures. That's actually it. Thank you.
great. Not you know, sure. um, so, you know, technique wise, uh, Hamid, uh, you know, you've been doing this now for 12 years. I'm, su I'm sure your technique has evolved over time. But, you know, for someone who's a novice, I mean, I, I think I'd feel a little uncomfortable because everything's done blindly. I mean, it looks very safe here, but what, what the foramen was fairly collapsed. You know, like, um, particularly you showed some scoliosis I'm cases. Sorry, and you that. recommend doing it on the concave side where the frame is a little bit more open. Okay. Um, yes. And avoiding, um, not the concave, the convex side where the frame is a little bit more open. Yeah. Um, so if you could comment on that. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, the consideration, that absolutely, I was, I, as you can imagine, I um, when I started doing that, I went, like most of our colleagues, I went to a weekend course anatomy course and a uh, lab cadaver course. And I came back and do that. I didn't have all the support structure. You can imagine that I was extremely choosy who I choose for this procedure. And if any question, in the first six months I started doing that, I opened every second patient when I just didn't comfortable. Something wasn't right. I didn't feel comfortable. I was set up as such that I just tried that. If I felt that it's just not right, I would go and open it up and do the old-fashioned way. I have done thousands of open surgeries. I know how to do that. My setup was such that I would give it a try, and I did. The first six months, every uh, third or fair, every in some case, for 5S1, every second case, I had to open it do the old-fashioned way. But then I become more and more and more comfortable. What I noticed at the beginning as well, yes, I tried to go from the side that it gives me better approach to the disc. But... I think my indication and my technique has grown with my experience. At this point, um, there's sometimes I do go from the right side, but I don't set up mirror. It confuses really my entire war if I set up the mirror. Every, but what I do, I set up the same way, but I have enough experience to do the approach from the right side. I would say probably I do 12 cages from the right side. There are cases that I automatically go from the right side, but that is less uh, regarding the convexity, sagittal zag deformity, I'm, I'm sorry, coronal deformity, meaning that convexity or concavity of scoliosis. It is mostly has to do with the torsion. If the spinal process, if the vertebral body uh, has a huge torsion to the left side of the patient, the angle for the approach becomes extremely unfavorable. Then I go to the other side, then it gives me better approach. But we have set up a system that actually I have my, uh, my medical license in 36 state. I go get my credential in people's hospitals. And Dr. Gasco, we did it like I went there four times. I go with them. I scrub with them. I uh, make sure they don't go through anxiety and heart attack. I had to go when I start doing that. And all the anxiety you talked about is absolutely right. So my job is after having done 3,300 level, I can reduce that anxiety. I scrub in, I help them through this. I just came from Texas for another surgeon where I got my credentials, I scrub in with them, and I put them through the first five to 10 cases without that the huge anxiety you just described. Great, Th thank you. Thank you. Wonderful presentation.